Imam Hussein TV3 wants to improve their content to ensure that we meet our goal which is to encourage, inform and educate the Shia around the world about the teachings from the Holy Household, the Ahlul Bayt. For us to do this, we need your help. Complete our survey and tell us which programs you like, what you'd like to see more of and what we could do better. The survey takes less than a minute but you could be within a chance to win a ring made from the marble from the holy shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein TV3, your gateway to Karbala. Thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you and welcome once again to another episode of The Late Night Show. I do have to check, um, sorry, but it's just, just one of those things. The Late Night Show with myself, Ali Fadl, welcome once again. Um, I'm going to get straight into it. Basically, there was a guy um, from the Ansar of Medina. Yeah? He came to the Holy Prophet looking a bit confused. He said to him, look, Ya Rasulullah, if there is a funeral ready for burial, and a lecture is being given, or is being given, sorry, and delivered on teaching a useful skill at the same time. But I can only attend one of the two. Which two has a greater right on my attendance? Ya Rasulullah. So the Rasulullah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, turned back to him and says, look, if there are people to bury the dead, you must attend the lecture. That increases your knowledge. Zian, because the reward of one such lecture is better than attending 1,000 funerals. Listen to this. 1,000 funerals, visiting 1,000 patients, 1,000 nights of prayer, 1,000 days of fasting, 1,000 dirhams given in charity, 1,000 non-obligatory hajj, and 1,000 non-obligatory hajj. Imagine that. There is a world of difference, the Prophet said, a world of difference between all of the, all of the above and one session spent in a scholar's company. Do you not know that only knowledge leads you to worship God and only knowledge teaches you how to worship God? The good of this world and the next is aligned with Shino, knowledge. Just as the evil in this world and the next is aligned with ignorance. I have absolute great pleasure in welcoming my guest for this evening, a man who I guess knows the importance of education, knows the importance of family, uh, knows the importance of family life, of community, and also building a career to be proud of when he retires, inshallah. We're gonna have a lot of fun today, guys. Uh, so buckle up, seats uh, buckled, whatever you wanna call it, sit back, relax, have your tea ready. This is the late night show. Um, I wouldn't recommend any kids to be in this, uh, in this uh, episode, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, get ready, uh, put your hands together and help me welcome Al Haj Haydar Zamir Al Qazaz. Thank you very much. Take a seat, Haj Haydar. How's it going? You alright? Alhamdulillah, not bad. Not bad. Good, good. This is a weird sofa, so I'm going to just position myself in the correct way. Good. So I don't sink. And this in. is a weird kind of chair, so I have to like give me a second to we'll, kind of like we'll get there. acclimatize and stuff like that. Shalak Haydar. Alhamdulillah. So for those who don't know, um, me and Haydar, we go back quite a while. We do. Just just five years. <laughs> It's not that much of a long time. No, I'm joking. We've been, we've, more than five yeah, we've, years, we've, no? wait, wait, we've been going. Wait, wait, we've got. I've known you for a long time. I didn't like you five more than five years. Me ago, neither. But, you, yeah, but yeah. We like, we, I haven't known you for a long time. Well, I've known you for a long time, but I haven't actually like you know. We, right. we haven't like struck a a, a, a a good relationship, should we say, for, for um, quite um, a while. Um, but we still haven't probably struck a good relationship. Um, like, we, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on anymore. But I'm no, gonna go. Who is Al Hajj Azair? Hello. Haydar Thamer Al Qazaz Al Baghdadi. Al Baghdadi. Oh, Kad. Kad me sorry. Kad me. I think it. it um, yeah. I think it depends who you ask, to be honest. Okay. Um, but yeah, as you said, um, Iraqi national, mm -hmm. or originally anyway. I was actually born in Scotland, which is a bit of a weird one. Okay. Yeah. Not Explain many. how that happened. Um, my dad was in Iraq, um, and Mashallah, who is a very very smart man, so he was offered to do a PhD in the University of Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah, so he went from Iraq to Kuwait, and then from Kuwait to Edinburgh, and from Edinburgh to Glasgow for a little stayover before we travelled to Manchester. Okay, so, so in the year we were in Glasgow, I was born. 
All right, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you said that your dad's a smart man. Mm. We're going to get on to, we'll, I guess, your dad and the influence he had on your We'll, we'll on talk your about him later, later yeah, yeah. So, okay, so born in Glasgow. I was born in Glasgow and I was raised like my, my younger years. And by the way, should I look just at you or should I sometimes pivot? Or uh, it was just a combo? Because I feel a bit conscious. This is a combo. This well. is normal. Yeah, don't you, worry about... Don't you're about, looking at the camera, so... Yeah, I have to because I have to sometimes speak to the audience. Okay, but fine. then I speak to you. But you can speak to the audience if you want. No, that Absolutely would be Absolutely fine with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the audience are so, involved. They're, they're, yeah, they're yeah. here. Yeah. That's and why we had, the, we had the round of applause and everything. So yeah, we did. The hero somewhere here. We did, we did. So yeah, I was raised in Manchester. Um, and um, at the age of probably 12, 13, we moved to London, uh -huh. um, and I've been here ever since. Who is Hajj Haider Qazaz? Just a normal guy, to be honest. Just a normal guy. Yeah. You're a normal one. I think so. You know, so self, self, self proclaimed special one, as Jose Mourinho would say. I think, I think I'm. I've You're got special in certain areas. I've got some special talents, I think. <laughs> I think everyone thinks that they do, even if they don't. Um, but uh, oh, no, it. no, I'm just a normal guy. All right, fantastic. So tell us a bit about Manchester, because a lot of the guests that I've had before, they, they, they kind of grew up mostly in, in, in London. I can relate to that. Yeah. Is Manchester similar? Do you know what? There are some subtle differences, um, but they, they, they had a big impact, I think, on my, on my childhood. The community is a lot closer because mm -hmm. it's a lot smaller. Mm. Um, and, and therefore, for example, whereas here, you may speak to five or six different guests and they went to five or six different Husseiniyas or oh, yeah. Jamaat. In Manchester, it's not like that. There was one major place. That is Islam, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's Islam, Manchester. And that one major place is where everyone used to go to, basically. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it was really nice, to be honest. I've got four siblings as well. I was going to say, so yeah. if you're the Akhra al as they say. Kind of. Oh, okay. Kind of. So I have a younger sister. Oh, you have a younger sister. Yeah, okay. I, have, I have, first of all, my brother and sister are twins. Oh, mashallah. Okay. Yeah, they're twins. And then I have an older sister as well. And they were all born outside of Yeah, so, so my, my, the eldest, the twins, are born in, in Baghdad. Wow. My elder sister is born in Kuwait. Okay. I was born in Glasgow, and my youngest is born in London. And she, okay, so when you guys came back to London, she... Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She was born. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. fine, fine. Yeah. Um, how was it like growing up with your older brother? Because he's quite a character as well. Yeah, he used to bully me a lot, Did to be honest. <laughs> yeah. You won't see it because those of you that know my brother. He's a lovely guy. He is. He's a lovely, lovely guy. That's why he was just, a bully. Just, yeah. just, a, just a word to the yeah, audience. Yeah. Um, Haj Ahmed Ghazaz, Allah yadhukra bil khair, inshallah. Allah, it's Allah, it's Allah, probably twice the size of... Haj Haider is not, <laughs> is not, is not a lean figure, I'm not a small boy. He's, he's not a small boy. Not a small boy. Um, and so Haj Haider is a very much a gentle giant, as we could say. Gentle. Haj Ahmed? Yeah. Yeah, Haj Ahmed. So. Yeah, 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 gentle giant in that way. So he bullied you? Yeah, like, obviously, no, obviously it's just, it's just like brother. Yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, he, he, he was always um, just having fun. Like I had a couple of things that I'll never forget. I was really scared of the dark when I was young, yeah. like massively scared of the dark. I think a lot of children are, but I was yeah. especially scared of the dark. I used to stand at the, at the front of Why were you scared of the dark, just out of interest? I don't know. It's, it's not like a deep-rooted fear that oh, okay, I, okay, I, I okay. just didn't like the dark. Yeah. I think I probably know why, actually, because my brother used to stand by the door and switch the light off and then do scary faces. And then be like, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. Switch it back on again. And then when I tell him, Ahmed, please don't do that. Come on, I don't like anything. Like, okay, okay, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And he does it again. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, cool. Um, so that was one. He used to constantly, his, his thing was grabbing my hands like this. Yeah. Um, in, with one hand. Wow. And the other hand is like a torture mechanism, basically. That you couldn't get out of it? Not for the first good 15 years of my life. 15 years? Yeah, he's a strong guy. Yeah, he's a strong he's guy. A strong guy. But could you, he couldn't do it to you now, could he? I think it would be quite interesting <laughs> to see what happened. Now. He probably could do it. But, but I remember the day that I got out of it, yeah. he looked at me and I was like, uh-oh. He looked at me, he looked at me. Getting Times strong, <laughs> you're getting strong. He was really happy about it. Times have changed, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so tell us a bit about your dad. I, th I think he, he has a, a major role in, in, in your yeah, life. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. The my decisions dad, that you made in my, your life. Yeah, yeah, my dad, my dad um, was an extremely, or is, when it was, astaghfirullah. Um, he's, he is an extremely hardworking man. Okay. Extremely hardworking man. So, yeah, I have, I have a really good um, kind of memory of my childhood. I was quite, I'm, I'm very blessed to have a father who worked really hard for us and a mother who kind of freed herself up just to raise us, basically. Mm. She'd done like the odd job here and here, and of course, she, she taught in nursery for a while. Nice. But yeah, it was nice because we had both sides. We had a side where my dad was a great inspiration because he worked really hard and, um, you know, he was, he was, Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. he'd be awake right. and he'd be going to work. Yeah, yeah, he'd be going to work. And then on a Saturday, he'd do community work. He'd wake up at like 7, 8 a.m. and go to what, what now is the, the IWA, the okay. Jama'iyya Al-Araqiyya, okay. okay. um, that he was one of the founders of. Um, and Sunday was like a family day. Okay, so he did, he did specify one day for the for the. I was going to say, yani, 6 a.m., gets back late, Saturday, 6 a.m., gets he did, back late. We still, we still had 
of course, interactions. Okay, I mean, like course. you know, he wouldn't come back at like 11, 12 o'clock. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Um, but what yeah. was his role? Uh, what did he where? Do? What, what was his role? In, okay, so he he done like, um, if I'm not mistaken, he done a computer engineering degree. Yeah. So you know how Iraqis are either typically doctors or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, engineers. Yeah. Engineer, yeah. Those engineer yeah. basically. Um, and he started off um, working as a programmer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the, the kind of the final years, he's retired now, but the final years of his career, he was a CEO for a company um, that basically does credit scoring. So if you go to a bank yeah. and you try to apply for a loan yeah. and they say no, yeah. that's my dad's fault. <gasps> yeah. So it's your dad's fault we don't get mortgages? Yeah, well, unless Or loans? Yeah, pr- yeah, I'd say so. No yeah. way. If you're, in, if you're in South Africa. In London, no, I don't think it's... Oh, right, right, right. In South Africa. Okay, okay. Yeah, wow, South wow, Africa. wow, wow, wow. Okay, fantastic. So, so uh, he wasn't a CEO until the latter stages of your life, as in, in the last yeah. 10 years, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you saw his work ethic. Is that what kind of inspired you to say, yeah, you know what, this is the kind of path that I want to take or Yeah, I think else? so. I think so, albeit it may have been subliminally for the, for the, for the initial part. Um, I actually really wanted, you, you know my career well, maybe we'll come on to yeah, well, what I do, right? But um, I really wanted to be a pharmacist. Did you actually? I like, really wanted to be, I was dying to why? be a pharmacist. I got no idea why. I'm so mean? glad that I'm not a pharmacist. <laughs> Apologies to any pharmacy uh, <laughs> graduates. But I really, I'm really happy that I'm not a pharmacist. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember the conversation I had with my dad. Um, I'd done really well in GCSEs, mm-hmm. like really well. And then A-levels, I didn't do too well because I had discovered like the wonderful world of football and going out with my friends and whatever. Okay. So I that, think it's pretty, pretty much typical with most Yeah, most people, especially right? if you go from high school to college. I think yeah. sixth form normally is a good little buffer, but yeah. college kind of, you... you your, op- your horizons are well, well open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, wanted, I, I didn't get the grades of pharmacy. I remember having a conversation with my dad and I said, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat the year. And he said, why are you going to repeat the year? I said, I want to do pharmacy. And he's like, you're not repeating the year. I'm like, I am repeating the year. He's like, you're not. I'm like, it's my life. He goes, it's my house. <gasps> I said, what? <laughs> and he was like, if you want to repeat pharmacy, then yeah, I'll chuck you out. Like, really? obviously, I don't think he was going yeah, to, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like, he, he, that was his approach. So I kind of begrudgingly went into a business and finance degree that I didn't want to do. So he, he had a massive impact in the start. I mean, that's the best thing that's ever happened. So I was just going to say, because now, thinking forward or thinking back 10 years' time, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the best decisions that you made. 100%, 100%. Okay. As in, like, counting paracetamol. Apologies again to all pharmacists, but that, they don't that just is, count paracetamol. I'm a as well. Not just I'm a I'm joking. And, uh, that, no, there's there's, mo- there's more that goes into it, but knowing who I am now, yeah, that is not your world. No, hundred percent. No, no, no. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have suited me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. So, again, from our conversations, um, I know that you you had a keen interest in the Islamic world, Shia studies. Sunni studies, Islam, how it works. Yeah, all religions God, actually. For example, all, even all religions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sparked that? Uh, oof, I don't know. I've ever been asked that before, and I don't think anyone actually knows the answer. But there you go. This is the first. Um, the, the, what sparks it genuinely was I was about twelve or thirteen, and I started having a lot of doubts about my beliefs. In all honesty, that was the major reason. Mm. Um, I remember being in a lecture, um, and the guy had said something, um, and I just didn't believe it. I didn't believe it, and I heard the story, and I was like, I just don't. Were you quite it. stubborn when you were young? I think stubborn st- now. So I, I don't I think, think it's I much think has I'm changed. I think I'm less stubborn now than I was in my early adult years, life. Yeah, right? No, adolescent, I wasn't stubborn. Ah, okay. I don't think I was. I was a, right. By the way, as a side note, we talked about childhood. I was yeah. a very, very good kid. Like I was a teacher's I pet. They define what? Ah, uh-huh, okay, okay. I was a teacher's pet. I was a mummy's boy, and I used to fight. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I was a very, very good kid. Okay. You yeah. still are a, a, a good guy, yeah. As in, but sometimes you see naughty kids and they become good or bad uh-huh. or whatever. As in, like some kids you say, or yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you okay. weren't active in, in, that, in that sense? Not at all. Really? Yeah, not at all. I would never have thought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La I would never have thought like, that. I actually even, thought even you, like, like you were a menace when you were younger. No, no. And now you swear. Yeah, identity. yeah. No, no, no. I was like the, the goody goody. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I, I just didn't believe a lot of the stuff. And then I started having a lot of doubts, to be honest. And I think so this is interesting. Yeah. The reason why I ask is because a lot of kids growing up, they do have those doubts, but they don't voice the, their, mm. their, their concern or their, or their opinions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you did. What did that lead to? So to be fair, it led to me then wanting to research not just the, the kind of theological differences between Sunni, Sunnism and, and Shias, but also religions. I mean, like I read the Bible, I read parts of the Torah, I read the Quran. Did you find anything interesting? 
Um, I found a lot of two snippets. Well, I found a lot of contradictions, and I think that, that's 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 the bit that then led me to spending a lot of time as a as a kind of a young adult to go to Hyde Park Corner every weekend and debate. No way. Yeah, do you not know this? I did not. No, yeah, I did. Yeah, a lot. And I, I know, like, we've never had that conversation. I didn't know you actually went to Hyde Park. No, no, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I did. Like every week, it was a lot of fun, uh, and and I was thinking about it today actually because um, someone was talking about like Christianity and Islam and stuff. I wasn't there necessarily to be to prove other people wrong okay um i was there to kind of listen to what other people had to say and then as my strength started growing in my aqidah it just became a fun like just talking to crazy people basically really? that's what became most of it okay so then um, there was a lot of personalities big personalities now mm. that had a major influence on your world view said amar for example yeah I'm, I'm not sure it had an effect on my world view oh no no, I wouldn't say so at all, actually. I, w I was quite, I'm quite fortunate in the fact that I think I've had good mentors in different okay. um, kind of parts of my life. So saying that Amar, from a religious perspective, was a massive, massive, massive positive influence on me. I mean, saying that Amar used to come to my high school every week from when I was in year 10, year 11, um, and then um, in college we used to do it as well. But we, he was, that was the first Salat al I'd done in my high school ever which I arranged and I got, went to the head teacher to sign up for Sayyid Ammar to come in. Wow. Yeah, so the first, like, the first lectures so that Sayyid Ammar... You must like 16, 17 at the time, right? Yeah, High school, right? yeah 16, 16 I think. 16? Yeah, yeah. So this, this keen interest in, in, in religion then came from a, a, a younger age. So it was 12, 13, 12, I told 13. you I started having doubts. Okay, wow. And then I started having doubts about religion, which, which I don't think we should shy away from saying, because no. I think some people... Absolutely not. Some people, um, whether it be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and the, you know, the existence of God or the existence of religion yeah. or the Prophet or the Imams, whatever it may be, will yeah. have doubts sometimes. Yeah. And I think yeah. Yeah. there's different ways to go about it. And I think the sweep under the rug is not a good way. Anyway, I didn't really seek advice from him. I just started reading. Okay. Um, and the more that I read, the more that I realized um, that Shia 12 is... No, the reason why, again, the reason why I mentioned that question and, and why it's interesting coming from you is because, again, for the, for, for the audience out there, especially the parents out there, you mm. may not know that your child is going through these doubts. And so having a constant communication with them um, helps bring out those, those fears and maybe you can address them. Yeah, I think but so. your, your, I guess your parents, m m my parents didn't. Um, they didn't actually come to me and say, Baba Mithanen, this is God. They taught me what I needed to know, but I was kind of yeah, brought up by the Husseini. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think it was the same, the same with me because I, you know, I was, I was I was frequenting mosque at the time with my dad, well, you know. Okay, and, so and okay, no, no, you were having conversations. Yeah, with and there was right, always, right, right. you know, God bless people like Abu Zainab al Kadhimi okay. and, and Abu Nabil al Abadi, and you know, my father included, where there was always a program going on for my for my age group, okay. where they would talk about religion okay. and stuff. I mean, the major doubts that I had were in a in a summer camp. You know, the camps that they used to run. Uh, so anyway, the, no, the Jama'i used to run camps basically, where it was like. Literally bunk beds, six yeah. in a room. Yeah. So my room was the like so that we used to always have me, Mahdi Zwen, Ahmed Ajina. Oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that okay. room is also your football team in the tournament. It's also the people you eat with. It's also the people that you're on around putting toothpaste and other people with. That is, <laughs> that is your. Those are your boys basically. Nice, nice. And nice. they have like late night conversations around yeah. campfires and stuff. Anyway, so yeah, I, my parents were slightly oblivious to the fact. To be fair, I don't think they knew. Um, I don't think they know now. I think they, you know, they'd be kind of be like really. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just, it just led me to read loads of books. And I think one of the, the, the major books that had a massive influence on my belief in, in Shia Islam was, was a book called Then I Was Guided. I then think I most guided. people know and most yep. people have read as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, Fatah yani, that, that book really? I was, yeah, yeah. You know, that was, was your like, your reference for every kind of That was when it became the Sunni Shia. The Sunni Shia studies. Conversations. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, moving on from, from, from that early life, yeah. um, you kind of went against the status quo at the time and got married quite young. I did, yeah. 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 And not also did you, not only did you get married quite young, but the the traditional way of getting married back in those days, even till today, is mm -hmm. is mothers, here's my child, you know, this is my child, this is my child, get to know each other, they get married. Mm -hmm. You went against not against, but that wasn't the route that you took. No, no, it just like, you know, I, obviously these things are all when they come from God, yeah. right? But yeah, I met my wife um, at the time there were uh, lectures being done in uh Khoti Foundation. Okay. So they were, I don't know if you remember or not, but in the gym downstairs, yes. they used to do, remember when they used to bring like Nation of Islam guys to do lectures yeah. and stuff I like that? I recited once though. No way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in, in Shah Ramadan, 
I was in charge of the boys' lectures, and my wife at the time was in charge of the girls' lectures. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you're heads of um, departments, basically. Basically. Okay. So we had to interact, and yeah, yeah. Um, that's how. That's when I first met her. Obviously, at the age of 15, I wasn't thinking of <laughs> thinking oh, about right, right, about right, getting right. married straight away. Right. Sid Fatan, she came to the same college as me as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it was just fate, basically. Yeah. So and you know, my my, my my father knew her father, my mother knew her mother as well, which probably made things a bit easier. I was gonna say, was that a difficult question or difficult kind of situation to go to your dad and say, listen, I've I I found the person I want to marry. Yeah, I think I think the first step that was even more difficult was telling my dad at the age of seventeen I want to get married. What did he say to you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what time was the show gonna end? <laughs> it was censored. It was censored. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't massively happy to be honest. Um, to be fair, he, I think he took it in jest. He was like, okay, you're, you're very young. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about when you get into uni. So for me, that was like, right, I've got now th three or well, rather they said when you finish uni or actually get into uni. So I had like a two years window okay. to think, right, in the next two years, how can I prep myself? So when I get into uni, my dad takes me seriously when I tell him at uni, listen, you told me to come back at uni. I'm ready to get married now. So you don't want to be at the same level, education wise, finance wise, whatever it was, two years later to then say, Baba, look, I want to get married, but said, nothing's yeah, changed in the last two years. Nothing, nothing mentally has, has prepared right, you for right. it. Right, I wanted him to take me seriously, right? Okay. And when I first asked, he didn't. Mm. Um, you Did know, you blame him? No. No, I mean, like, if my son came up to me at the age of 15, 16, and just playing N64, I used to play, like, Zelda and Super <laughs> Smash Bros. <laughs> and GoldenEye. And that's all I used to do. And if, if my son had done that, or done that, I, would, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take it seriously either. Oh. Um, I started doing loads of part-time jobs during that period. Wow. As a way to so you were dedicated to marriage is just one side of it, but dedicated to kind of improve yourself in that in so, those two years. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know what? I think it happens for different people at different ages. Yeah. But you get to a stage of your life when you think, right, I want to leave my kind of childhood and younger years behind, and I want to start moving into the adult world. It happened quite young for me. Fantastic. Yeah. Adult world. We'll hold it at that okay. because we're going to go to a short break, and right. after the short break, we're going to go into the adult world. Of okay. Hajj Haydar Thamar Al Qazaz Al Khatib. Salam alaik ya Aba Abdullah Assalam alaik ya Ibn Rasulillah Assalam alaik ya Ibn Amir Al-Mu'minin Wa Ibn Sayyid Al-Wasil May your heart be at ease, O servant of mine. I am your Mawla Al Hussein. I am the stranger of Karbala, and you are a stranger in these moments. Whoever visits my resting place, I visit theirs, and if they were put in hellfire, my intercession would spare. Did you not visit me after every salah? Did you not cry for me and wail for me? Did you not call out, Labbayka Ya Hussein? You have a right upon me, O oh my servant, and here is where you will take it, so do not be scared. O oh Allah, I beseech you in the name of my mother Fatima and her broken ribs. Let the light of Ziyarat Ashura bring tranquility to the graves of your deceased. By contributing to the Husseini message, a recitation of Ziyarat Ashura will be in the name of your loved ones who have passed on. Let their names be mentioned by the grave of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. What final time?
Welcome back, dear viewers of The Late Night Show with myself, Aifal Villa. With me, I have my dear friend, um, guest for tonight's show. Um, it actually doesn't feel like a show, it just feels like two friends just having just a chat, chat isn't it? over, over water uh, in a plastic cup, in a white plastic cup. They've looked after us. They have. They've done a great they job. They have. And they're going to look, look after us more as well um, throughout the Fantastic. show, I can assure you of that. Fantastic. Um, Hajj we, 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 we talked about a lot about your, your, your childhood, mm -hmm. um, growing up, your... Um, Education. We, we the most important thing for me was was actually finding out that look. Actually, at a young age, you had a bit of doubts about the religion, but you you took it upon yourself. Which is this? This is the value to the to, to the parents here. You took it upon yourself to actually go out there and, and, and search for answers because you weren't happy with what what you were receiving from the scholars at the yeah. time. Yeah. We're going to move on to, to to more around your career now. Okay. Um, because again, there are some valuable and little nuggets that the parents can take um, and inshallah implement within their own children's lives or whatever. Yep. Before we do that, actually, over the, the past couple of weeks, um, we've had a bit of a, a competition uh, with the guests and you're okay. inshallah going to be involved. Inshallah. This is not the food tasting thing, so don't worry. This is um, not the food this tasting This is not food tasting. Thing. This okay. is called Heads Up. You played Heads Up before, right? I have played yeah, Heads yeah. Up. So the way this works is we do two ways. So right. I, you're going to explain to me, basically. I'm going to try and guess it. Those points count towards the tally, or okay. towards the, 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 the competition, basically. Okay. It's not really a competition, but a leaderboard. Um, so far, we've had Motivate, you know Motivate. Yeah. Neil Nasser has been on here as well. Okay. Amir Jawad. Okay. Zian. So Who's top? Motivate with seven. With seven? Yes. From you, you, him explaining and you Guessing. explaining? No, 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 no. Just one side? Just one side. You're one. the guesser. I'm, I'm the, the guesser. Explainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when you flip around, it's not, nothing to do with points. Oh, okay. It's fine. just just me having a go. Fine. Yeah. All right. To put it up. Are we ready? As soon as I place it on my forehead, it's going to be ready. Okay, so you're going to click it and put it on your forehead. I'm going to put it on my forehead, and then your time starts. Okay, and what's the rules before we start? I can't say the words, but I can say anything else. Anything else. Describe it in any way, shape, or form for me to understand. Now, you know how my brain works. Okay, so for example, for example, <laughs> if it comes up with fire, man, I'll say, puts out with water, like this. Yeah, I can yeah, use, yeah. I can just look at it, but I can't say fire. You can't say fire. Okay, fine. And we're trying to stay away from, from hand movements. It's more the words. Is that a rule or are we trying to stay with it? Yeah, I, want to, I want to be top of the leaderboard. Huh. Um, no, you're okay with it. Okay, fine. Yeah, you're okay with it. Because a lot of people say, A lot of people didn't ask as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they haven't asked. They didn't ask. You Very don't ask, question. you don't get. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Ready? Right, I'm ready. Audience ready? Ready. How long do I have? 60 seconds. Your time get starts ready. now. Three, two, one. Someone that prepares food for other people. Uh, a waiter or a... Prepares food. Uh, prepares a chef. Food. Okay, kind of. Um, that. Someone that will defend and prosecute and... and Lawyer. Yep. Um, protecting other people in the front of a building or walk, driving around. A security around. man. Yep. Uh, makes cakes and bread. A baker. Yep. Uh, if you have beautiful this, that's cheating. That's cheating. Hands. Yeah. Then, yeah so they, they take pictures of it. What are you? Photographer. You're a, no, they take pictures of it. You're oh, a, I, can't, I don't know what that is. You're, we'll just, well, so if you're beautiful, someone takes pictures of you, but just this area. Hand model. Yeah, yeah good, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, someone that like drives uh, bikes off buildings for movies. A stuntman. Yep. Uh, Nebi Allah, Yusuf, Pyramids. Whale. No, no, no the bad Musa. guy. The bad guy from the pyramids. Pharaoh. Yep. There is a job uh, title. Someone that goes to the gym and helps with, tells, tells her what to do. A uh, personal trainer. Yes. Pharaoh. <laughs> yeah, it was there. Pharaoh's a title. Oh, that oh my day, that's amazing. No. Cook, lawyer, security guard, baker, hand model, stunt person, Pharaoh, personal trainer. Oh, and we've got a video to go with that as well. And we've got eight. And we've got eight as well. And that's so top. Top of the leaderboard for now. Yeah, well, well done. Well done. Thank You're you. always going to win this, brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well it might be because I know how your brain works more than other people. <laughs> Bad guy pyramid. <laughs> Pharaoh. <laughs> as simple as possible for me. Hand, model, A, pay. Okay, so now it's my turn. Uh, it's going to be really hard, but do it. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, okay. let's try. Okay. As soon as you, by the way, as, as soon as you straighten it up, it's going to start. Okay. okay, ready? Yeah. Get ready. Three, uh, two, one. Uh, Nouri Sadar is a? Poet. A person who goes in when there's insects in a big house and he comes in and... and uh, an exterminated. No, it's another word. It's an American. It's, it's, it's an American. Pass, 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 pass. Fumigator. Oh. Uh, when you have a gin inside you... Uh, exorcist? Exorcist. What are these guys? Uh, cameraman? Yes. Uh, a person who does heart thingy-majiggy. Surgeon? Yeah. 
Yeah. When you walk into a big building, a uh, uh, Stacy. Receptionist. Yes. <laughs> Someone who goes to the car, goes to the yeah. car, and then he fixes things. Mechanic. Yes. <laughs> Your shoes are so bad, by the way. Um, person who looks after a, a a a place of recreation for kids and stuff like that, but he's it's an American Caretaker. word. Oh, no, no, no. Park ranger. Oh, that's very tough. Um, prisoner, a, a Security guard. Security guard? A guard. Officer? Um, an American version of it. American uh, word for it. I don't know the word. Yeah, warden. Oh, I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, head yeah, of yeah. a prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. the head of a prison. Fumigator okay. uses smoke, by the way. And it smoke, done. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was quite, that was quite good. I think I got seven, maybe. That I got wasn't poem. bad. Poet, one, two, three. Nine. Oh, no, because no, I no, put no, them all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Receptionist, six, uh, seven. Oh, I've got seven. That's good. Yeah, that was my fault. That's because I think with the... Because this is American stuff. Or what is... But by the way, yours is a lot harder than mine. I mean, yeah. I had Pharaoh and you had Exorcist and Fumigator. Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't yeah. bad. No, that was all right. Okay, cool. So, we, how, we now have a new leader, um, ladies and gentlemen. We knew how... No, we knew how... Oh, how... We now have a new Shall leader. Shall I speak Korean as well? Yeah, That's a new amazing. leader of um, the... Heads up challenge. That yeah. was a um, a series long challenge. Fantastic. So note to the producer, if this goes the whole series unbeaten, then surely then deserves to be a prize by the end of it. Um, this is more for just bragging rights. Um, yeah, bragging rights. I wouldn't I don't want to say e ego on an Islamic channel or pride on an Islamic channel. That's okay. So yeah, it's more for bragging rights. Bragging. Yeah. Um, ego and pride are the wrong choice of words. But. Sick guy. Yeah. You can okay. get a present as well, no? So we'll work something out. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll work something out. Thanks. We'll work something out. Zia. Thanks. Um, at age 20. Yeah. Right? 2021 is yeah. when you had your first kind of sales. Not sales, actually. No. After uni, what happened? Tell us the journey there. Because it's um, quite interesting. Yeah, so actually, uh, something that would be beneficial for you to my first sales job was when I was like 16, by the way. You don't, you don't know about oh, this. Oh, really? I went to sell double glazing door I to thought door. it was after Bloomberg. I went to sell double glazing door to door for a month and sold nothing and just got swore at. And I just thought, who, is this, who would ever go into sales? This is a I'd never going to do anything like this ever again. La yave. Yeah, yeah, so, so then what, what, okay, so how did that, okay, please yeah, explain. Yeah, yeah, so basically someone said to me that there's, there's an opportunity in a, in a sales role, it's commission only. You walk and you sell double glazing. Yeah. Um, it, would, they, it were called Zenith. No, 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 sorry, I found after that. So, you, so you've after had, that? You've had a bad, bad just met. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Do after sales, that, allow it. I was 100% sure I was going to go to investment banking. Mm. I'd done a finance mm. degree. Um, I got a first in three years in a row, first year, second year, third year, alhamdulillah. Um, I'd done a placement um, that wasn't part of my uni degree, but I was working in second year uni. So I'd done an internship. Mm -hmm. And instead of going to uni second year, I worked. But I study okay. that night and yeah, 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 in yeah, between yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Pharmacists um, do that in the fourth year. No, but they have, that's part of their course. Yeah. Oh, this is not part of your course? No, I, I saw our internship separately. Complete, oh, right. Completely separately. Oh, okay. Um, and so I was only of going referring to pharmacists in jest, yeah, yeah, but then... Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, okay. no, no, pharmacists yeah. out. Yeah, no, instead of, uh, instead of going to my lessons, I used to go to work. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I had 0% attendance mainly, like in my second year. But I was oh. catching up through notes and stuff. But then you still got a first in that? I got a first. I got a first. I worked really hard. I told you I wanted to get married. Okay. And so my plan was, if I'm going to go to propose for a, for a woman from a respectable family with nothing, <laughs> at least the least I could have is a decent degree. Yeah. Um, and my degree, obviously, because I didn't get that good grades in A-level, wasn't an amazing uni. Mm. Um, anyway, alhamdulillah, I done really well. And I was pretty sure I was going to do investment banking. And I graduated and I went on my honeymoon. I got married, Fantastic. went on my honeymoon, came back. And the credit crunch hit. Um, and the finance world was turned upside down. So I had second interviews, third interviews, forward, fourth, fifth, so in some cases, six layers of interviews yeah. that were all cancelled over one night. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, literally. Over one night, I got emails, cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. I mean, like, the, the whole world was falling apart. So what did you do? This was credit crunch. Yeah. So I, I was just thinking, what, what can I do? Um, and I started applying for every single job I could get my hands on. Um, finance or no finance? I didn't care. I mean, like, I, I, one of them, like the two, the two jobs that I had um, that I, was, I chose from when I went into the world of work, one was working for the council. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, and it had to do like with... social care and stuff? No, other way. no, it had to do with fight, tackling extremism uh, from grassroots and stuff like that. Oh, okay, I know who the... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another one was a sales job that I literally found in The Guardian. Um, I don't read The Guardian. Like Data Monitor? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my wife, for some reason, had the Guardian newspaper. I don't read newspapers. But in the back, I went to the job section. Yeah, I went to the job, and it said Arabic speaker wanted for a sales role. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know you don't know this? So I went, I went to both interviews, um, and the um, the data monitor interview, which is a, com it's a company that does. Yeah, this is irrelevant research. to you guys. It's relevant to us. Um, but yeah, go on. They basically they offered me like less than fifty percent of what the council job offered me. Okay. Less than like a lot less. I mean, the base at the time was like fourteen thousand pounds for a sales role, but there was good commission to earn. Um, and and the lady didn't want to hire me, and I said why? And she said what, you've got data monitor or data monitor. Nikki. Yeah, yeah. She said I, I don't want to hire Stacey, you. Stacey, Stacey, Nikki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah, <laughs> your mutual friends. So she said that she said you've got no sales experience at all. You've got zero sales experience. Why no would I hire way. you? And I just started ranting about how I'm a clean slate and I'm going to be a sales monster. And I, I was good at in being interviewed. Yeah. And she offered me a job at 14K at the time. And, and, and the other job was more than double that. Okay. Um, and I had a choice to make. Um, and I asked different people what they thought I should do. Um, and uh, in the end, Akhira decided it. Akhira decided Akhira it. Akhira decided it. Okay, fantastic. I so started, you started the sales career. So you started the sales career. Mm. Um, and you pretty much started at the bottom with a lot of pressure on you to prove yourself in yeah, a way. I think, I, think, I think the major pressure was the fact that I was living with my parents, with my wife, and I didn't want to live in my parents' house. Mm. I wanted to, to, to move out. And that was the major kind of like pressure that I had okay. and my kind of motivation or pressure. So I was going to say, look, okay, um, you, you did quite well. Over the, over the next 10 years, 12 years, 13 years, how, how long has it been? Because you, you haven't looked back C since that moment. Right? Yeah, coming up to 13 now. Okay, and Congrats. you've moved up to the ranks in terms of managing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. So what was the, what was the drive? Um, because your, your initial drive was moving out, out of the house. Okay, fine. You, you, then, you then got your own place. Yeah. But then you still kind of carried on. Yeah, I mean, I mean listen, I was, I, was, I was very young and I had the dependent. My wife was still studying. Okay. Um, so my earnings had to cater and provide for two people. Um, and that was my biggest motivation. I, th I think it still is, to be honest. Mm. Just wanting to be able to provide for my family is the major motivation that I have. Um, and yeah, you know, during that period, we're kind of newly married. You also want to have a bit of fun, yeah. go out, go traveling. You yeah, want to buy a decent yeah. car and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So yeah, it was just it was, so it was working you, hard you for that. knew. It's, so there's a lot of people at, at the age of 20 who have, who are no way near what they want, what they know what they want from life. Yep. And I guess at 20, you didn't really know what you wanted from life, but you know, you knew at that, at that age what you needed to, to progress. To be honest, if you know, I didn't know what I needed, but my, my wife is, is a, she had a massive influence to be fair, because she's, she's a good planner. She likes to plan stuff ahead. Mm. So we, we were talking about our 30s at the age of 21. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is, which is, I don't know if all wives, I think all wives like to talk to their husbands, yeah, right? Yeah. But she, she sometimes too much. But they like, they like she, she, she likes to plan and she likes to kind of put milestones and goals and what she'd like to achieve mm. and stuff like that. Um, so that, that was a big, big motivation for me, to be honest. So I didn't really know what I needed to do. I, I, I needed to know that I put my head down and I work hard. That was my position, basically. Mm. Because the first year of doing sales, I done really well. Um, and then... Instead of going back to thinking about finance, I thought, actually, if I'm doing really well here and I've earned a decent wage and I enjoy it as well, which yeah. I think is really important. Yeah. I think once you can find something that you, you can do for work that you enjoy, it's massively helpful. So one thing I've noticed about your, your, your daily life in your role, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and actually this image, if we can get the image on, on, on the chest, you, you, like, you, you like to be yourself. Right. There you go. Right? You, you, you like to be yourself. You didn't conform to what a stereotypical Muslim in a very British um, company w w would do. So, for example, a lot of people would say, you know, if there's, if there's drinks or if there's, for example, meat conversations or if there's Islamic conversations, a lot of people would shy away and just probably either not say anything mm. or would say, no, 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 we totally agree with you. This is so wrong. But it's, you, you had, you know, you had your worldview, you had your religious priorities and your values. And you said, this is, look, this is, this is me. And I don't know how to say for other nefsek. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's easy to do that if you're doing well. Um, and I was doing well at the time, okay. so it made that a bit easier, right? Uh, as a side note, that picture has nothing to do with religious values. Uh, <laughs> there's a cigar and I'm holding a gun. So I don't know how you link that at all, but that was a no, no, no. just so no, you guys know. This is you being this yourself. Is, this is you. This is not at all. This was a day at work where they, they made a day called Mafia Day. Everyone dressed up as if they're part of the Mafia. Um, 
and we just took a picture because I had a good outfit. That's the time. No, my I wife meant... gave me a rapper. That's the rapper <laughs> I'm putting in underneath down there. And that's, that was Emir's gun. That was Emir's gun. And the cigar someone gave me, and it wasn't a real cigar. It is a real cigar, but oh. I didn't <laughs> anyway. What I meant, the, uh -huh. whole, the whole reason why we got this image is because it's basically trying to say, you know, Ane, this is me. I'm doing well. This is this is who I am. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm I'm again. I'm thankful that I was raised in in a Shia family, and and, and my mom and dad have always been, um, you know, religious people, and so I had those, those values growing up, mm. and they became part of who I am. So I d I've never compromised my religion for for money. I never will. Um, and uh, in the end, the career that I had, and this may be different for other people, but the career that I had, I saw as a vehicle for me to be able to sustain a nice life for my family. So I wouldn't compromise my religion right. for a wage. So at this current stage of your life now, you do a lot of interviews. Kind of. Not as in, yeah. not, not every single day, but there, yeah. there, 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 there's Oh, you mean I interview people? Yeah, you interview people. Oh yeah, I thought you meant Sorry, people no, 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 interview no, no, me. No, no, oh, no, 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 I mean, yeah. you interview a lot of people. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and there's a lot of, I guess, 20 year olds, 21, two, three year olds yeah, yeah, yeah. who are going into the work life, going to the corporate world, for example, uh, who may not really have the best, um, best skills and tips okay. and, 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 and techniques. Okay. If, what's the best advice that you can give to, to, to young execs who want to get into the world of... of okay, so we're we talking specifically just interview or advice in general? Interview. Just interview. Just interview. First, I love, because I okay. overhear your interviews and I love them. Yeah. Is that, tell me. So the, f the first thing I think that's really important interview is to come dress correctly. Okay. Yeah, so if you go to an interview, so this is the really interesting thing. What is an interview? An interview is selling yourself, Yep. right? So you need to put the best version of yourself forward, right? Yeah. According to the status quo, the best dressed version of yourself is when you wear formal clothes. That means that you're putting an effort, that you're trying. So yeah, anyone that's ever come into an interview in a, in a pair of jeans or a shirt with no tie, I mean, like I would expect someone to come to an interview dressed as, as you're dressed. In as, I, as I am today, yeah? Yeah, like that, that for me, you've hit the first criteria when I interview somebody. Anything below that, you've got making up to do. So you, you wow. start on a deficit. Okay. I mean, I had people turn up in like terrible creased shirts and baggy jeans and trainers and stuff like that. And for me, that's an instant, it's gonna be an instant no, so they have to prove themselves. Okay, basically. fine. So that's, so that's one. Um, I, would, I would definitely say um, in terms of conversating and, and, and the interview process, manners are massive. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't expect people to like interrupt or um, or be like rude or use colloquialisms or swear or something like that. And I've had... Like rude boy language, for example. I wouldn't say, sorry, not rude boy language, but as in yeah, well, street we're, language. Well, colloquialisms, right? Yeah. Which is like street language, which is like slang. Slang. Slang, we call it, yeah? Okay. Um, slang in interviews is a massive no-no for me. Now, can I speak slang? 100%. Yeah. I can. 100%. I can. I know. <laughs> you know I can. <laughs> but in an interview, like as in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the corporate world, you'd never hear me speak slang. Wow. So you need to be able to mix it up, okay. I think definitely. One um, last one before we go to the break. Yeah, the last thing as well is, is, is do your research as well. About the company. About the company, about the type of industry you're going into, about the type of job, um, and, and really any, any form, or, interestingly, all these three points just show that you're willing to give effort, which we'll come on to later. Okay. Um, it's just about putting the right effort in, I reckon. Fantastic. Okay, on that note, we're going to go to a small break. After the break, we're going to be talking community and giving back to the community inshallah so stay tuned for
my guest held captive. Um, he is blindfolded. Don't shoot me. Um, we're not going to shoot. However, <laughs> we do have four dishes of food. What have I signed up for, Mullah? Uh, it's not that bad. I'll be honest with you. It's not? Yeah, they're, they're very generous with you. They're, they're okay. A lot of mercy. Alhamdulillah. Have you done um, this to anyone else, by the way? Oh, of course. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've had, we've had really weird stuff before. But this one is actually quite good. Is it? Um, at, you, you are a, a bit of a foodie, aren't you? I love food. You love food, love mashallah. Food. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, and so this should be a walk in the park for you, I think. Okay. I'm going to start with the easiest first. Okay. Basically, what I'm going to do is... Mm -hmm. Can you give me a spoon <laughs> instead of feeding? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna feed you live on air. Okay. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Bismillah. When it gets, I'm not gonna open like a. <laughs> sorry, I'm yeah, not gonna no. open like a bird being. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. When it's close, let me know. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready, ready. Yeah. Ready, ready. Okay, open up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. That's the easy one, isn't it? Yeah, coleslaw. Coleslaw. All right. Mm -hmm. Same. But then they're nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Since you had a bite, I'm gonna. It's not have even the creamy one. You got me the cheap coleslaw. It's the cheap, but the Morrison's one probably, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have bite as well because I like full <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. This one. Mm -hmm. Put your hand in, choose one. Put my hand in? Yeah. Right, right place? Right. Yeah. Okay. You might as well have a coleslaw taste, but mm -hmm. you know what this is, don't you? Already. I can tell. Surely you know what this is. I don't have a clue what this was, by the way. Um, I really like the closest thing that I think it may be is, is safarjal, which is quince. But that's the that's which is what it's called quince. Quince. Yeah. That's the closest thing. Up. But it's not bitter enough. I'm trying more. Yeah, of course. Is it all the same? Uh huh. Got no idea. It's a it's a type of like fruit or veg, but I just don't know. What it is. Just for anyone or the viewers to to see. Yeah. No. Well, this is like a very poor quality type of food, so the taste is not strong enough, which means it must be an exotic one. Ugh. Um, Mashallah. Huh? Oh, it's a Sharon fruit. A Sharon fruit? I think so. But it's not right. I don't I know. Get, I can give I get up. a confirmation of what it was? I give up. Uh huh. Like, it's not a Sharon fruit. Well, like, it's a Quincy, Mincy thing that you were saying. It's not ripe, Mullah. It's not ripe. One more, one more. Another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, last, yeah. last one. This is my dinner, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> If this is a pear, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit Yasser, just so you know. If this is a pear, I'm gonna hit Yasser because it tastes like nothing, by the way. No, it's not a pear. Okay. <laughs> uh, can I get a confirmation of what it was again? I forgot. Okay, gotcha. It's a vegetable, man. It's not like. A. Hey. All right. Basically, do you know what it is? But, uh, one second. It, it could be like a root vegetable. Of some sort. What's a, what's a root vegetable? Ones like, that grow under the ground. Like the ground family there. of the turnip and parsnip. Family and of the turnip and the parsnip. Yeah, you're close. Close? Yeah. Yep. Um, Just guess. Butternut? Squash. Butternut squash! There we go. That took a while. That took a while. This is the third one, and it's another feeding one. Okay. Is it? Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, this is mushy. Tell me when to open. This is mushy. Okay. Open. Watch the bit. That's an easy one, isn't it? That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that is, but I hate it so much. <laughs> is that potatoes on it? Is that potatoes on it? Did you tell them that I hate no, potatoes on it? I, I didn't know. I didn't know you didn't like potatoes. That I thought you might. That is so butters. <laughs> oh my <coughs> God, it's <coughs> properly... I've, I've been avoiding potatoes on it for the last 15 years, yeah? Alhamdulillah, I mean, say Allah, what a sick guess. Yasser, well done. Well done, Yasser. Yasser, well done. All right, this is the oh last Lord, one. Oh, that's another, terrible. <laughs> have another feeding one. I feeding. would vomit straight up with all this stuff, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it. La, 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 la. Huh? Wait, ready? Mm-hmm. Yalla. <laughs> oh, man. You've gone from potato salad to orange marmalade. <laughs> Wow. Ah. And again, it's a very we're cheap done. marmalade as well. We're done. You can open You can open up. You can open up. Oh, that was amazing. That was right. So you went orange marmalade, potato salad, and butternut squash, and the coleslaw. Four out of four. Well done. But just to let the viewers know, this does not go to waste. This goes to the fridge of the Mahasain TV um, yeah. kitchen. Um, and they this definitely... Yasser's breakfast tomorrow. Yasser's breakfast tomorrow, yeah. Um, actually, on that point of Yasser, 
mm. and community. Right. Yeah. Nice link. Tell, okay. tell me, tell me about um, about about some of the projects that you've had with Mahfouz TV. I think you, you had a quiz show uh, in Ramadan this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, you know already that we know a lot of the the, the East Coast yeah, or casual. I, I love Coastal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we know a lot of the guys that work in Mahfouz TV, of course, as you know, and they do they do amazing work. So I've always I've always been happy to help. Um, I mean, I've done like a few voiceovers here and there. Um, and uh, but you yeah. transitioned from voiceover to like, I mean, yeah, front of, I, th I think, camera, I think right? that was through um, Harik al um which again was just by chance. I think you know, the whole idea was for you to do a lot of the presenting um, on, on the Harika shows, but you just it was impossible for you to do that, plus read the Akumail, plus do this, and it was just too, yeah. it was too much, it's not fair. Yeah. Um, so it was just have a go, basically, um, and it went quite well. And I think it's kind of we're gonna pause on the presenting there. just for a second because I um, this this kind of led to. Uh, seven steps to heaven. It did. It did. So and that's why we mentioned Yasser. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, done a done a done a quiz show with with my dear younger brother Yasser, yeah. um, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and yeah. I think a lot of the the audience and the people called in really cool. enjoyed it as well. And yeah. so presenting wise, presenting wise, mm. um, it, it was just a, a coincidence. Uh, you didn't. You don't. You, as in, I know you from your from your work. Presenting, you do it on a daily basis, essentially. I mean, yeah, it's, right? it's, it's, it's part of the role, but also, you know, I think you you. Being in attendance are like annual awards. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've hosted a few of those as well. Yeah. Um, so those those are quite heavily attended, and, and albeit it's a completely different genre. Like yeah, but that's because you're a man of many talents, so you can be flexible in terms of being able to yeah, what to that's uh, one way of putting it. Present, yeah, right? That's one way of putting um, it. And so presenting, we, you, you're, there, you're then in it. When you did kind of get used to it, how, what was it like, the presenting world? I think it's um, I think I think quite it's fun in it. I think it is really fun. I still get nervous. Oh. Yeah, 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 absolutely. As in, like before this interview, it's just this is just me and you talking with with our like dear friend Said Hassan just sitting behind the camera down there. But I'm st I, like I'm still nervous because I'm conscious of the fact that it may go out or not may it's going to go out to to a wider viewing oh. audience, right? So I naturally get nervous before every potential performance that I have, whether it be a haraka or a work awards or here. But my, that's, that's how I am. I get a bit nervous, and then that makes me perform, hopefully, mm. when, I'm, when I'm doing something okay. relatively well. So why do you feel like there's a need to, to for example, not, not to mention Harak al-Husseiniyah too much, but like Harak al-Husseiniyah is now part of your life? Yeah, massive part. Um, massive part. What, what, what started it? Why, 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 why I think, Haraka? I think, you know, we, we've spoken about this in, in multiple different kind of like platforms before, but it was, it's just a bunch of guys got together, so the four of us got together, and we thought, you know what, our community needs help. Now, um, I think part of, of what made us want to do this is that, that the generation that's slightly younger than us, yes. they're, they're, they're not being supported. Um, and in this day and age, um, and, and I think we all know already that corruption is, is rife, right? It's so easy. Everything's at a touch of, of a hand and on social media. And, and, and so, yeah, the, the, the younger brothers and sisters need help. And I think for us, we, we got that help from our elders when we were younger. And we thought we need to now give back to the community. And that was the biggest, I think, inspiration behind it. Would you agree? I definitely 100% would agree. Yeah. Um, and actually, community-wise, uh, I kind of feel the same way. And our, our, paths, have, our, our paths have crossed. Um, before, uh, before this photo, um, there's a wow. photo of me and you together. Forget this one. Uh, that is, that, is, yeah, that is a lovely shape. And we're going yeah, to talk, ab talk about that, because that genuinely looks like you've, you've put it on your face as, as, a, as a work thing, rather than it was, was beautiful. naturally far. <laughs> what is Wow. So yeah. this is yeah, this is us probably what ten years ago. I, 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 I would I would I would say that was a, um, that was a long, that was a long time. time. I don't know why the I wore. Swag is on point. I, I don't know I'm why. I down with a button done. Yeah, you actually wow. taught me that you shouldn't be. You just may wear a button when you sit down. You can't, oh, you can't sit button. down for button done. Yeah. It's just it's just awkward. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there was you, you went through a bit of a glow up. So the next photo. Um, is is what is, is, glow is up, what, what 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 you were before? I don't speak slang. What is a glow up? Uh, so you look really questionable back what, in the day. The, I, I think that's. I think like I'm owning that look. I'm not sure what the look is, but I'm. Oh, yeah, but you can bring it left left for door as much as you want, but but then you went from this to this. Yeah, that's what a glow up wow, is. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's what I'm a glow bold. up. So what happened? What happened to the um, to the brow? I got I got married and my wife beat me up. No, the, 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 I don't, there's I don't, a funny story behind the brow. I don't, I don't know how long we have, but it's actually a funny story. Go on, tell me. So on the day of on the day of my wedding, I'll tell you really quick. The day of my wedding, I went to a hairdresser, and this hairdresser I used to go to for years. He's a brilliant hairdresser, Syrian guy in Wilsden. Uh, for those that know, will know him, right? Yeah. Um, 
And I went in and I told him, listen, today's my, today's my wedding. And the reason he, he, he knew already it was coming up, but he said to me, on the day, I'm not going to give you a really low fade, uh, like light, uh, no hair, because it won't look good in pictures. Yeah. So let me know when it's your wedding. So I walked in early and I said, look, today, booked it in, called him. Today's my wedding. Look, out, make my hair look nice in pictures. And he gave me a haircut. And then I'm, I'm alhamdulillah, mashallah, or, or sadly, a very hairy man, right? <laughs> a very hairy man. Um, so, so, so we're at that age. At that, at that age, you can see, mashallah, the eyebrow is yeah, strong. It the eyebrow is very, strong. very strong. But also, if I don't shave... You were like, famous for it. Like, I knew you... Had special you, powers, Mullah. I knew you, yeah, of a, you, through, through that... It's like a magician's hat yeah. when it came off the power as well. Yeah. But anyway, there's, like, if I, if I don't... Sh well, at that time, if I hadn't shaved for, like, four months, my hair would literally connect from here to here. It's like crazy. <laughs> right? um, so, um... <laughs> In any case, God. yeah, yeah. God. in any case, so what he used to do sometimes, <laughs> threading, which, which yep. is um, a normal, normal Arab man thing yep. to do, for Absolutely. those of you that don't, don't be alarmed if you're a woman who's thinking, why the man thread? Yeah, yeah. Some for the Khadras out there, throw yeah, Arab Arabs, hair. Yeah. they thread sometimes. Cool. Um, so he used to thread the top bit here, yep. while you eat the coleslaw, you can see, <laughs> yeah. the top bit here, uh -huh. and, and it hurts. So my eyes were closed and I was laying back in a chair and he was doing his chicken finger with the thread, yeah. and, and I felt a pain in the middle of my eyebrow. <laughs> And I'm, I've literally swung him aside and I looked in the mirror and he's taken off the middle of my eyebrow. So I was like, <laughs> and you know, I can't translate word for word what I said at that time, yeah. but I said, to him, I said to him, what, what are you doing? And he's like to me, bro, you looked ugly, don't worry, I'm making you look nice. And I said to him, it's my wedding day, like, could you have not have chosen? Bear in mind that I've known. <laughs> my, my, my wife, I've been, you know, I was engaged for like a year. Oh, and my wife has never seen me without this, this, this beautiful monogram. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was gone. And I, I remember walking out the place. Uh, by the way, I stopped halfway through haircut. Yeah. My, half my beard was done, half the eyebrow. I threw the money on his face and like, I hate you. I'm never going to match you again. And I left <laughs> and I went home and I told my sister, listen, call my wife, cancel the wedding. I can't go no to the wedding. Way. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't yeah, was, that, was that special to you? As in, listen, I've looked at that for the last 10 years and all of a sudden it's gone. It's very strange. <laughs> it's like waking up and having a different, like, no nose or something. Um, <laughs> So anyway, long story short, my sister fixed up. God bless her, Allah, my sister. You know, you she, she fixed it up for me. She, she, <coughs> I done my beard. Um, and I went to the wedding, oh not telling Lord. anyone. And I walked into the wedding hall. And I was like, <gasps> by the way, this is like back in the day, the weddings were big. I think now people are doing small, like VIP lounge. There was a good three, 400 people there, Mullah. Yeah. Women, by the way. You're the men's famous. was a small one. Like three, 400 women's. Is. <laughs> uh, women's, is, yeah. And I walked in with no eyebrow. And they looked at me, and one of them right in the front, my wife's friend. So I don't to take. Me, you look different. I'm like, do I? She's like, yeah, what have you done? I'm like, nothing. And she said, you've taken off your eyebrow. <gasps> she went like this. Everyone was <gasps> shocked. And I said, yeah, she's like, it looks nice. Yeah. Like, really? She's like, and then it just carried on? She's like, yeah. And then I walked a bit more, and someone else said it. And by the time I got to the actual car share in the yeah, front yeah, of yeah. my wife. And this is the first time your wife sees you? First time she sees it. <gasps> So it's like basically... Yeah, yeah, and she, and she, she asked, 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 what do you think? She said, it looks really nice. Oh, okay. Just and then it was done. And it was done. It was, it was a lot, I felt a lot more emotional at the time, but that is the story of how the wow. magic monobar went, man. And I'd love to see that, that, that. Let's see the glow of that. Yes. that. I'm glowing in that boys. one as well. You and your boys. That then. is the boys. Look at this picture, yeah. man. They'll be happy that, to know. That's, should we just name and shame as well? No, 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 Why? Oh, Sayyid, name Sayyid and shame. Bakr, in the far left, we have Sayyid Jawadin. Yeah. Manza Ahmed Mashkur and the one of his eyes closed that looks possessed is Muhammad Abdul Razak. Better known as Mo Chippy Rooney. Mo Chippy Rooney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fantastic. Evisu, look at that. Mashkur strong. Cool, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, so we're going to wind down with, cool. with just a couple of questions. Go for um, it. Go top for three it. memories. That's a really, really hard thing to, to go into. I have different sets of, of, of memories. Um, the birth of my children is definitely you've got three kids i've got three, three memories so they that that can win <laughs> yeah. um i've also had three really bad football injuries that i'll never Ooh. forget and and oh, we didn't have time man we didn't they have will go in the they will go in threes as well because yeah. i've got three of them i broke i've broken a toe and a the toe is nothing compared to the knee and the ankle yeah right? but that was bad oh, that, was bad it was bad yeah it was bad um ruptured oh, ruptured bad. acl and dislocated knee and an ankle and whatever and so yeah those those memories albeit they're not necessarily good ones or top but like i'll never forget those moments um, also one of those moments um i was injected with a lot of drugs and it, when i was hallucinating i was talking to imam ali so that was an amazing no way yeah i'll tell you the story there yeah. it's really fun um and then i think probably Probably going to, to Karbala for the first time. 
And the first time I went to Karbala was, apart from when I was really young, um, was for Ziyarat al-Ba'in. And I walked the, 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 the walk of al-Ba'in. That, that was probably one of my best memories as well. Okay. Uh, what are you most thankful for? Uh, you did mention your, this is a perfect chance, by the way. What? You mentioned your missus. No, oh. no, it's not the thing I'm most thankful I'm very oh. thankful for my very wife. And, 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 and she's been an amazing life partner to have. Um, but it's I a quite a difficult question to answer, to be honest with you. No, I think it's to being born a shear. That is my... Really? Yeah, yeah. That is the thing I'm most thankful for. And my name. They kind of come together. But like, imagine, imagine, imagine my name was... Although you're, you're quite particular with the spelling. So a lot of people, when they say hi, that's H-A-I-D-A-R. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fussed. I'm very, glad, I'm very glad my parents spelled that in that way. But that's not my choice, Mullah. What do you mean? As in, like, I don't have a choice that to spell That you want my name. it to be spelled H-A-Y-D-E-R. Yeah, but I, I grew up, I say that to you now as oh. a man, but when I was a kid, my parents signed your name, right? You yeah, chose yeah, 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 his name yeah, yeah. and how it's spelled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so my dad chose to spell oh. it. Like that. How, how, did you, how did you choose to spell it? H-A-Y-D-E-R. Which makes By the it way, very English. It is. English yeah. It's very hey. easy. Hader. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's really, okay, okay. It's really okay. easy for English people. Uh, but I would say, yeah, like, as, imagine, imagine I had like a unisex name, like Noor or Jude. I'd probably hate my life, um, so I'm very, very well, happy. I don't think it would hate your life. I probably would. So I'm very happy that my parents called me Haida. Haida. And also, the fact that I'm Shia is the reason that they were able to call me Haida. So that is what I'm most thankful for. Beautiful. Um, yeah, that is actually beautiful. Um, so what's next for Hajj Haida? Um, to, to be fair, Mullah, I think it coincides with what's next for my career and work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, Halak al Hussainiyah. Um, which is a big, big part of my life now, and, and, and yours, as you know. Um, and really, I've got a full-time job, of, apart from these <coughs> two, two points, is, is raising my kids. That is just yeah. the, the major focus. Now, I wish we had more time, Wallah. There's, there's a lot more that I want to I've speak really to enjoyed about. it, yeah, um, I really enjoyed it. Specifically, the whole upbringing. I know that, because we go back and forth when it comes to children. Mm, like I'm, mm, you're you're mm. my go-to when something happens with, my, <laughs> with Hussein and Layla. Good luck. If I'm your go-to, <laughs> good luck. Because you're like you're like just two three years ahead of mm. me, um, but yeah, like, inshallah next, uh, next inshallah. couple of next inshallah. couple of shows. Any last words for inspiration? Because you're an inspiring lad. Am I? Yeah. Um, As I eat my coleslaw. To be honest with you, there's one hadith that I really like mm. that I had a long, long time ago that I try to keep in front of mind, which is um, the hadith. Just in case I, I get the words wrong in Arabic. Which basically means <coughs> God loves or God will bless or God will arham. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Bless. Yeah. Um, someone who does something but tries to perfect it or tries to do it in like mastery, I think it means. Um, and I think that's, that's good advice for anyone who's listening that's thinking whether about it's a career or community or how to be as a husband or how to be as a dad, if you always try your best to, to get things to 100% perfection level, um, then, you know, and this is, this is a hadith of the Prophet, right? So, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's the advice, I think. If you can live our life like that, then you're always trying. Just to let you know, dear viewers, that this interview was PG. Mm. Compared to like our normal conversation, not in that sense, not in that sense, but like we, we, we've dumbed it down quite a lot. And there's a lot more that we wanted to speak about as well. Um, yeah, yeah, inshallah, next time. There's not a lot of time, right? So we've got to give snippets. Yeah, uh, and it was fun, it was lovely to get yeah, your really snippets of your life. Thank you for thank that, you by the way, because not a lot of people, me. by the way, would share what you did. Um, and so that's the whole idea of this show um, to get really nuggets of gold for the audience. So thank you so it's much. It's been a pleasure time. and an honor. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, pleasure of ours as well. Uh, on that note, um, tune in next week, next time, next month, whatever, whenever the next episode is going to be aired, essentially, um, for the late night show. Uh, and inshallah, we'll see you soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يلا حبيبتي يلا قوم شربتي عافية بالعافية
عافية شنو الطفل وياك؟ لا ايش عندك قاعد قوم قوم عفوا حبيبي قوم 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 ايش عندك قاعد امشي روح روح فوق العب عمو روح لا توقف مني ما يبت حرامي طبري فهوى دنيا انا ظلام والخدمة ذوى ما يبت حرامي طبري فهوى ما عند حسان اخر تلوى حبيبي تعال لا تخاف ما اريد ادي